In this problem, we will be focusing on hypochlorous acid, which is a chemical very closely related to what you'd buy as household bleach. Uh, that's the salt version, the sodium salt of the hypochlorite ion, and we're going to see that come up here uh, as soon as part B of this question. So, uh, as it says here, hypochlorous acid is a bleaching agent and a weak acid, obviously. It's not one of our strong acids. It gives us the Ka value, so that's kind of handy. That's always an important value to have when you're looking at weak acid base uh, equilibrium questions or buffer questions, of which this will be both. And so as we get started, they're looking at us, looking for us to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration, um, which of course is part of the equation here. Now, they haven't necessarily given us the, uh, the larger sort of rendition of this equation that we often see, which uses the acid along with water. So this is a little bit more shorthand version. The other way we often see these is when the acid itself is reacting upon water to make the acid species. And there's no there's nothing better or worse about one or the other. Just so you kind of remember, if you haven't seen one of these uh, in, the, in the last few problems, that these two equations given, the one they gave us and the one I've written, are more or less the same thing. Um, they, they're actually a little bit more concise to use the one that was given. So uh, for this, then the Ka expression would, for the equation they gave us would be the, the hypochlorite ion, which is our conjugate base, the molarity of that times the molarity of our hydrogen ion, which is kind of our key acid species, and then the molarity of the acid molecules unreacted, so OCl, or HOCl. So from that, we can find our hydrogen ion rather simply. Uh, remember in, a, in an ice table or rice table that uh, the hydrogen ion we're trying to use to here calculate the hydrogen ion concentration is the equilibrium concentration, okay? Because at the beginning of the reaction, there isn't any of this yet, remember? So as we look at this, I'm not going to write the whole rice table out, but remember, as we think about an ice table, the initial concentration, the ending concentration, it's kind of small here, but the initial concentration of our solution is given as 0.14. The original concentrations of these other ones would be zero then. And at the end, we're looking for this. That's our X, right? This would also be X since they form at a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio with each other. And on this, we would say it's 0.14 minus X. Now, as you know, we typically treat that X as negligible as far as how much we're losing from the original acid concentration. It is not negligible in terms of how much there is of the uh, hypochlorite conjugate base ion and the hydrogen ion itself but with the bottom, we treat as negligible because that not only makes our lives easier, it allows us to not use the quadratic formula, which we've been told we won't need. So let's plug in what we know. 3.2 times 10 to the negative 8 is our given Ka value. Our top values would be X and X. So both the hypochlorite and the H, uh, the hydrogen ion would be Xs. We don't know those. The bottom would be uh, 0.14 because we're treating the X here as negligible. Don't forget to make note of that somewhere in your work that we're deciding, you've decided and decided to uh, move forward on the idea that the X is negligible as far as subtracting it from the acid. So without that, our math becomes a lot simpler. We've essentially got X squared equals 3.2 times 10 to the negative eight times 0.14. And we can solve it from there, multiply and do your square root. Um, I think when you multiply this, x squared equals uh, 4.48 times 10 to the negative 9. We'll do a square root on both sides of that. And x comes out to be 6.7 times 10 to the negative 5 mole water. And that's our hydrogen ion concentration. So that's all they're asking for. If they were asking us for pH, of course, we could go a bit further. But as it is, this is what they want. So we'll stop there. So that's our answer to part A, 6.7 times 10 to the negative fifth molar concentration of hydrogen ion. Now, they want for part B, kind of a somewhat unusual question in the ones that we've seen so far, at least this year, uh, but not an unusual question in, in the big picture of what you might expect to find on an exam. So write the correctly balanced net ionic equation for the reaction that occurs. Uh, this should have a when in there, it looks like to me, as or a when as sodium hypochlorite is dissolved in water. So sodium hypochlorite is the conjugate based salt, right, of hypochlorous acid. When it dissolves into water, uh, it's going to split into sodium and hypochlorite. Hopefully, as you look at any salt, in this case a conjugate based salt, with a sodium in the front, we often find the conjugate acid salts uh, would be something with a chloride at the end or a nitrate at the end that the salts that we're interested in when it comes to acids and bases typically have 
an obvious spectator. In this case, that's sodium. So as far as an overall equation, sodium hypochlorite, when it dissolves, would become or dissolve into water as sodium ions and hypochlorite ions, just the dissolving. But it's going to react upon water too, okay? Because, whoops, and we know that because the OCl is the conjugate base in the previous question. So let's roll back up here for a minute. But remember, as, as we look back to our original equation, and that's always important to keep in mind, this, of course, is a weak acid. And the conjugate base on the other side then has the properties of a base. It's a weak base, but nonetheless, it's a base. And so as we go down here, this is sort of a generic just dissolving equation that we're showing here. If we were studying something like, say, KSP, um, when we look at solubility equilibrium. But here, uh, the hypochlorite, this guy, is the base from the previous equation. So up at the top, uh, at the very beginning of this problem. And so what it means for us here is we need to show how that acts as a base in order to write the uh, equation, the, the reaction that occurs. And that important word there is kind of tucked away in this problem, but up to this point, all we've shown is something dissolving. That's not really a reaction, right? That's just dissolving. So the reaction would be involved when the hypochlorite, which is our conjugate base, acts upon water. And this would be hydrolysis. Okay? So to show that, remember, if something's acting as a base, it's going to produce, in this case, a hydroxide ion. Not because it's producing that, dissolving to form that, like right, what we would find with like an Arrhenius base. But now we're thinking Bronsted-Lowry definition of a base, where uh, the ion acting as a base here, the OCl, uh, takes or accepts a hydrogen ion from the water. So when that happens, take one of the H's from water, that leaves the OH behind, and the OCl will now have an H on the front, which you should recognize as the original acid from the previous problem. So in this problem, here we have the OCl acting as a base, a weak base, and this is its conjugate acid, which makes sense because in the previous problem, they more or less played the opposite role. Okay? So that's our overall equation, what's kind of happening in that point. And we've left out the spectating sodiums uh, from both sides of the equations to write what they've asked for, which, which here was a net okay, ionic equation. Now, they also want us to figure out the, the value, actually calculate the value of the equilibrium constant. Now, when they say here equilibrium constant, we're looking for a K of some kind. We've done KCs, we've done KPs, KEQs, we've done KAs, we've done KW, KSP, there's all kinds of them. The equilibrium constant here is important to recognize if you didn't immediately, what kind of a reaction is this? Well, we're showing again the action of a weak base. And when we have a weak base, that equation should be represented by a KB expression. Well, think about what that KB would be. It would be the species on the right divided by the species on the left as always with water left out, but we don't have any values. So how the heck are we gonna calculate a KB value without molarities given in part B? Ah, the trick is we don't need that because remember, KB times KA anytime is equal to KW. Oops, got ahead of myself. KW. And we do know two of those three values. So voila, we're going to know the third one rather easily. KB, we could say, by rearranging that equation, is simply KW over KA. And this is something we've done a number of times already, so hopefully you recognize it. KW is a constant, 1 times 10 to the negative 14 at standard 25 degrees Celsius conditions, which we can almost always assume is the case with weak acid base, even though they usually don't say so. And then Ka was given in the, in the beginning of this problem as 3.2 times 10 to the negative 8. When we punch that into our calculator over here, I take a minute to do that, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 3.2 times 10 to the negative 8. And that'll give us our KB value for the base, which is what we have in this problem. So the overall answer then for KB is 3.1 times 10 to the negative 7. No units on that, but KB, we found it. Okay. KA and KB related through KW. Don't forget that. When you've written a new equation uh, from one of the species involved, think about it. Is this acting as an acid? Is it acting as a base? Typically, you're taking the conjugate from the original equation and you're flipping the equation around to show how it acts upon water, in this case, as a base. So you need KB. All right, let's look at letter C. Calculate the pH of a solution made by combining 40 milliliters of an acid, HOCl, 
with 10 milliliters of a strong base. Now, that's going to sound a little bit like perhaps a titration, right? So we're taking an acid and we're adding to that a conjugate, I'm sorry, not a, a strong base. And so typical weak acid titration. What we'll need to do is decide at this point uh, whether we have reached the equivalence point, whether we have equivalence point, or where we are along the line. So let's take a minute to think about where we are. To decide if we've reached the equivalence point or who the limiting or excess reactant will be here, uh, let's figure out how many moles we've got right, of both the acid and the base. So for the acid, we have 40 milliliters and we have a 0.14 molar solution. Now we can do this as millimoles or we can do this as moles either way. If we treat it as moles, this is 0.0400 liters times 0.14 molar moles per liter will give us our moles and that comes out to be 0 0.0056 moles of our acid. Okay. Let's keep it simple for now. On the base, we have 10 milliliters of a 0.56 molar solution. In other words, that's 0 0.0100 liters times 0.56 moles per liter. Multiply that out and we get hmm, a familiar answer, 0 0.0056 moles of our base. In other words, our acid and our base are equal, same number of moles of each, which means we're at the equivalence point. The acid that was present has been neutralized by the base that's been added to it, or vice versa, however you want to think about it. And so we're at the equivalence point of this titration. At that point, what's in the beaker? What's in the flask? That's a really important question to ask, right? To figure out what's in the flask, we kind of need to consider the reaction that was going on. What's the reaction for what we've just seen? Well, in the end, it's, it's essentially what we had up above, but in reverse. So take a second and look back to your previous question where we wrote the, net, the balanced ionic equation here. It was this guy in the previous question. If you look at that equation in reverse, it's what's happened in question C, right? We took HOCl, the acid. We added to that sodium hydroxide. We're going to leave the sodiums out because they're a spectator all the time. And when that occurs, we get water, hydrogens, right, from the acid with OHs from the base to make water. And what's left behind? Well, that hypochlorite ion. Now, this isn't quite the equation that we started this problem with, but it looks a little like it because we've got OCLs on the other side again. And those are the key ion that we're talking about here. In the end, if we think about this as a rice table, the initial amounts that were there are gone, right? We started with 0 0.0056 moles of each, 0 0.0056 moles of the acid and the base. The water we're not too interested in. There wasn't any of this at the beginning. But now that these have combined in a one-to-one -one ratio, they've been used up completely, and there's now none of those left. Essentially, right, we're subtracting the 0 0.0056 from both of these, as it's a stoichiometric perfect amount. They're going to run out together. On this side, again, the water isn't interesting. We're going to produce 0 0.0056 moles of the conjugate, and that's what's going to be in the flask in the end. It's 0 0.0056 moles of our OCL ion. Okay, so from there, we're going to figure that out, plug that back into, and solve uh, using the KB expression right, from before. Because that little guy, think about him, the OCL ion that's produced by this reaction is what's going to determine the pH. And remember, that's what they're asking us for, calculate the pH. How do we know that the OCL is the species responsible for the pH in the solution now after the titration is at the equivalence point? Well, think about it. The acid is no longer there, so this isn't, isn't contributing to the pH. The base that we've added has been neutralized by the acid and vice versa, so this isn't contributing to the pH either. Water, which is in the flask, right, is we're going to consume to be neutral, at no pH con contribution from him either. So that leaves only one, and that leaves this one. Well, how does OCL result in a pH? And that's a really important question to understand because it itself, remember, is a conjugate base. Part of what they did in this question with B is they set us up to evaluate it in that way. Right there, we see the OCL ion acting on water as a base. When it does that, it produces, aha, it produces OH ions. And those are the key part right, of predicting, calculating the pH. Hopefully you know that if we know the OH concentration, and we'll know that here in just a second, if we know the OH concentration, we can calculate pOH, which gives us one quick step to pH, and we're home free. So that's what we're going to do. 
Let's take the KB expression then from that previous equation because look, this little guy, again, is gonna sort of sneak back in, you can imagine it that way, and cause this reaction to happen in reverse. Okay? It's not quite the same as looking at this equation just read backwards because that doesn't show the OCL necessarily in the same way as the beginning part of this equation does over here. But literally the equation that we've written is that mirror image. So they are pretty much flip flops of each other. But let's think about that equation from the previous question and set up the KB for it because that's where a KB would come in, right? So KB for our OCL from the previous question would be the OH ions concentration times the HOCL that's produced in the end divided by the OCLs we put in. Again, we're looking at that expression because we're, we're curious about how this conjugate base is acting upon water by the equation you wrote in part B. So that's why we're using that KB, which we calculated in part B and we're going to use now. And that's why we're considering this as a base reaction equation because the conjugate base from the titration in C is what's doing the work of causing a pH that we can measure. So KB, uh, we figured it out to be 3.1 times 10 to the negative seven in the previous question. We're looking for the OH concentration. Right? We don't necessarily uh, know what that's going to be. That's our X. And we're going to use that then to figure out the POH and therefore the pH. The HOCL will be equal to it. We're looking to find both of those as essentially X and X again. And then on the bottom, we need a molarity of OCL. Okay? We do need a molarity here. So we've got moles. We figured out 0 0.0056 moles. But what's the total volume of our solution? Well, let's see, we had 40 milliliters and we have another 10. So that's a total of 50 milliliters. So my moles in 0 0.0500 liters, 50 milliliters. And I can do the math there and figure out that molarity. Okay, let's punch that in the old calculator. 0 0.0056 moles divided by 0 0.05 liters gives us a molarity of 0 0.112. 0 0.112. Plug and chug and get our math figured out from there. Uh, it's in the end, should come out to be, I believe I have, 3 point, let me just check this real quick. Let's try that again. That's x squared at this point is equal to 3.47 times 10 to the negative 8. We're going to hit square root on the side of that. Okay. I should run through it with you. I didn't, I apologize. I should have punched it in my calculator along with you so that you make sure you see what we're doing here. So times 10 to the negative seven. There's our 3.47 times 10 to the negative eight. We want the square root of that. So I'm gonna square up my answer and I get a molarity of X as 1.86 times 10 to the negative four molar. That's my OH concentration. To find POH from that, we're going to do inverse log. So inverse log of that answer gives us our POH. So POH equals 3.730 approximately. And then we'll subtract that from 14. So 14 minus, oops, let's try that again, minus 3.730 gives us a pH of 10.27. Now, let's make sure this kind of makes sense, right? Just rationally. We've determined that in this solution, the pH will be a base, a slight base. Does that jive with what we actually did in this question? So let's go back and look. We used a weak acid, HOCl. We titrated it with a strong base, an AOH. And when that occurred, the acid and the base neutralized. It was mole to mole perfect. So those moles canceled each other out and used each other up, giving us only the OCL ion as a product that could actually cause a pH other than neutral, right? The water, of course, says neutral. So the OCL acting as a base then in our math and the way we just considered it, the OCL acted as a base according to this equation from part B. And because it's acting as a base, it makes OHs as a product, which should give us a slightly basic solution. And sure enough, we have a pH of 10.27.
So it makes some logical sense. This is a really important idea when it comes to understanding why, when we titrate a weak acid with a strong base, and that's a very common titration technique, we don't get a pH equal to 7 because one of the two products being made isn't a neutral compound like water is here. The salt being made, essentially, which would be sodium hypochlorite here, is a basic salt. And it's going to cause the solution by hydrolysis, which we see in that B reaction equation, to be slightly basic itself. All right, let's look at D. How many millimoles of solid in the OH, NaOH rather, must be added to 50 milliliters of 0.2 molar HOCl to obtain a buffer solution that has a pH of 7.49? Let's think about this. Key idea, buffer solution. All right. And we're talking about the amount of base that has to be added to an acid in order to get to a certain pH condition. It also tells us that the solid NaOH that we add does not change the volume, which makes our volume calculation easy. It'll stay at 50 milliliters. That's often the case in questions like this. They'll take away the, the fact that you don't have to mess with the volumes by making it negligible, and they'll usually signpost that for you and make sure that you see it. All right, so where do we start? Well, for a pH of 7.49, we consider there, what's, what's the hydrogen ion concentration going to be under those conditions? We want to evaluate that pH slightly. So that 7.49 pH would mean that we want a hydrogen concentration under those conditions of 10 to the negative 7.49. And that comes out to be uh, 3.24 times 10 to the negative 8. Now, that's important because if we look back at the beginning of the problem, that's the Ka value for HOCl, the acid in this question. So in other words, the Ka is equal to the pH. Hmm. Let's think about what that means to us again. When, does, when is pH okay, related to a weak acid base, strong base titration scenario like this? Well, that means the pH and the pKa are going to be equal. pH and pKa are going to be equal because in this case, the Ka value is equal to the hydrogen concentration. And you remember we kind of did that little square where we linked pH and pKa and the Ka and hydrogen ion concentrations. We're at the half equivalence point. The pH is equal to the pKa at the half equivalence point of the acid. And at the half equivalence point, remember, what does that mean? Half equivalence, at the half equivalence point, we know those two truths. The pKa is equal to the pH, and we have that here. And the acid has been halfway titrated. In other words, half of the acid has been converted into conjugate base salt. Okay? And half of the acid still remains. The other half okay, still remains. Remember on our titration curve, we'd be at our sweet spot here in the titration. Oops be sort of right in this, right in the middle of this zone right here. And so at that point, half of the original acid, which we started out with at the beginning of our titration, oops, has been converted. The total equivalence point would be here. All of the acid would be converted at that point. But at this point, we're halfway through the titration. Half the acid has been converted and half remains as acid at the half equivalence point. Okay? So these two things are both reality right here at the half equivalence point. And that's the scenario that they're giving us in this question. So in other words, they're saying how many millimoles of solid NaOH would it take to neutralize half of the acid is what it's getting at here. We need to get to that half equivalence point by adding not enough base to neutralize all of the acid, but enough NaOH to neutralize half of these acid moles. Well, how many moles is that? I'm going to grab my red and switch to that. Okay, pull this down. How many moles are in there? We have 0 0.0500 liters times a 0.2 molar solution, 0.2 moles per liter. If I multiply that out, if you're not instantly able to think that through, it's a little late when I'm recording this, so I'm not going to try to guess at it and make a mistake. Uh, 0 0.010 moles of acid. Okay, so we have 10 millimoles 
we haven't worked in th this year as I'm recording. We haven't worked as much with millimoles as we should have. But millimoles is like milli anything. You just move a decimal over three times. So to get from moles to millimoles, you literally just move the decimal over one, two, three times. You get 10 millimoles. Okay. So we have 10 millimoles of acid initially. We need to get rid of half. That's what this question is having us do. Remember, we're trying to get to that half equivalence point. So to neutralize 5 millimoles of acid, we would need 5 millimoles of base, 5 millimoles over solid NaOH. And that's what the question is asking. How many millimoles of NaOH must be added? Half of this. Okay? Half of this, okay? half of 10 millimoles of acid would need to be neutralized. So that means add 5 millimoles of NaOH. Specifically, the OH is what we're interested in, but we're going to add 5 millimoles of the base species. Now, they're adding it in this question, not via titration necessarily, because they're adding it as a solid. That's not how we do titrations typically. But through a solution, we could also add 5 millimoles, assuming the volume is still negligible in terms of how much it changes. The answer is still more or less come out about the same. So. To neutralize half the acid would get us to the half equivalence point because the pH and the pKa were equal in the scenario they gave us at a pH of 7.49. That means we just had to cancel out half of the acid. Let's look at question E. Household bleach is made by dissolving chlorine into water. We saw this on a previous problem this year. I don't know if you've seen it in the year when you'll watch this, but this is one of those disproportionation reactions where the chlorine is going from uh, one oxidation number to two different oxidation numbers, both up and down. So the chlorine in this problem is being uh, both oxidized and reduced in terms of charge. But this question is not about that, so we won't get into redox stuff just this minute. Calculate the pH of such a solution as given here, and the solution is this guy, if the concentration of HOCl is 0 0.065 molar, right? Well concentration of the acid is given, how does that help us get pH? Let's not overthink it. pH, remember, is inverse log of our hydrogen ion concentration. Do I know that? Uh, yeah, actually we do, because in this question, the reaction is suggesting, or the, the, the verbiage is suggesting to us here, that the bleach is made by dissolving chlorine gas in water. Well, that's what this says, chlorine's being dissolved into water. In other words, if we know the molarity of our HOCl is 0 0.065 molar, then we also know the hydrogen is the same as that, the chlorine is also the same as that. So all three of these would have to be, because it's a one-to-one -one reaction, everything's a one, each of these is 0 0.065 moles per liter. Now they gave it to us as the HOCl, but we need to recognize that any one of those three would also have that same molarity. Therefore, the hydrogen ion is also this value right here. So our pH is the inverse log of the hydrogen ion concentration, 0 0.065. Let's go to a calculator and find that real quick. Inverse log of 0 0.065 for the low pH. pH would be equal to 1.19. We have quite the low pH. Now you might look at this and ask, wait a second, that HOCl is an acid. Isn't it going to then just you know react as an acid like we've been looking at all along? And the answer is yes. But as we've often said, that amount of additional hydrogen ion would be negligible compared to the amount of hydrogen ion we already have. So while that HOCl could itself act as an acid and actually contribute a little bit more H uh, to this particular solution, it wouldn't be consequential. It wouldn't be significant compared to how much acid ion is already present. So that becomes our answer there. So that's the entirety of 1996. The big problem is a lot going on, a lot of complicated things going on on one question. Keep in mind, if you're like, holy smokes, that's an exhausting question, that the modern day free response questions don't typically hammer on one concept quite that long and, and drawn out. They pull out one part of this particular question, and then maybe the next section goes into something with psychiatry or redox or who knows what else. Okay, so. That's a lot all about hypochlorous acid. Thanks for listening. See you in the next video.